My name's Ian, I'm a historical interpreter here, and uh, today we're going to be taking a look in the house, uh, going, through, uh, going through the house really kind of room by room. One of the ways I, I kind of like to do this is uh, almost acting as if we're visitors of the Schuylers. If you came here in the 18th century, what would your experience be like? What would you be seeing? Who would you be interacting with? And how would you be interacting with them in different rooms? Uh, so that's, that's kind of the goal today. So let's head on inside and uh, have an adventure back in time. So welcome to the house. Uh, so this is the front hall of the mansion. Uh, as a guest here in the 18th century, this would be the very first space that you would actually enter when you came to visit the Schuylers. Before uh, this vestibule out here was added, now this, this space up here is added in about 1815 by one of the first families to live here after the Schuylers. Uh, but before that's added, you would have come up a staircase and into this hall. And this hallway is designed to make an impression. Just like you can see the house from the river, walking into this room is supposed to tell you something about the family. What they really want you to understand is that they're powerful, that they're wealthy, and that they're refined. So this then, this would be the most formal room in the house in many ways. Uh, after being received in that front hall, Sometimes maybe after a little bit of a wait, uh, but eventually being received by the family, this is where you're going to come face to face with the Schuylers, really spend a little bit of time getting to know them. This is where Millard Fillmore is going to marry Caroline Carmichael McIntosh in the 1850s, uh, a little bit later on, but much more famously than that because nobody ever remembers Millard Fillmore. Uh, we've got Elizabeth Schuyler right here. Uh, she's the, uh, the second daughter of the family. This is where she marries Alexander Hamilton on December 14th of 1780. This is the yellow parlor of the house. The name is pretty self-explanatory. Now having a monochromatic room like this, this is the height of fashion in the 18th century. It's very difficult to achieve because while this house is under construction, Catherine and uh, their family friend John Bradstreet are really gonna be the ones kind of supervising that construction Philip isn't here for the first 20 months or so. He's actually in England uh, taking care of military paperwork. At the time, he's actually in the British Army. Uh, but uh, while he's over there, he's buying textiles. He's buying stuff. Uh, he's sending back furniture, carpeting, wallpaper. Uh, and this means that he's seeing one end of the process, Catherine is seeing the other, and they somehow need to bring this all together. So yeah, this is one of my favorite rooms in the whole house. Uh, this, uh, this library is a little bit smaller than it would have been at the time. Uh, you can see there are these kind of closet spaces over here. Those are built in in the 19th century. They eat up about the, the original layout of the room. Uh, but this library would have had bookshelves uh, enough to contain two to 300 books at any one time. So very few people ever would have had open access to this room. Uh, Philip probably gives uh, more or less open access to this room to his sons, uh, though uh, especially with some of the sons and uh, with his daughters, he's probably recommending books out of the library and lending them to them. Uh, he does lend books to people on a regular basis. However, as far as getting open access to use this room unaccompanied whenever you want, pretty elite group. So this is the dining room of the house. Uh, however, this room is only really used as a dining room a little bit later on, uh, probably early 1790s moving forward. Before that, this may have actually been a bedchamber. chamber, uh, probably goes through several different uses at different times. So as we head up here, uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to walk up here into the salon. This would be a room used for dancing and for music. Uh, other large-scale social functions, uh, for instance, you could put, or potentially put your musicians over here, leaves this whole open area open for dancing. So we got the, uh, the boys' bed chamber right over here. Uh, the boys uh, are very, very close together in age. So while they're all kind of using this room at about the same time, they're also not always here. Uh, they're going to be going to boarding school. Um, they are in, in Johnny's case, or sorry, in uh, Philip Jeremiah's case. Uh, they're going to be spending time up at Saratoga property, learning how to to manage land and how to manage the family business. 
Uh, so we've got the girls' bed chamber over here. Uh, this room likely would have had a yellow wallpaper as well at the time. We're still working on reproducing that. However, uh, all five of the girls would have used this room. But unlike the boys, who were basically born boom, 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 right in a row, the girls had that 25-year age spread. This means that when the family moves into this house, the three oldest girls are already, have already been born. They're going to be growing up in here uh, using this space. And then you're going to have uh, a pretty lengthy gap before you have Cornelia and then eventually Katie in this room. The reason I like this room so much, this is Philip and Catherine's bedchamber. And a lot of times if somebody were to ask me, all right, I've got time to see one room of the house, what can you show me where you can cover every aspect of the family in one space, this is it. This, uh, this bed chamber would have been for Philip and Catherine's private use, but it's also gonna be a space that they give to their very best guests. So this, uh, this space is where they're going to be, be hosting their very best guests. Now this can include hosting for meals. Uh, for instance, we've got this table set up over here. The Washingtons dine in this room on several occasions. Other times though, the Schuylers themselves will go and sleep in other rooms of the house and they will end up giving this room entirely over to their guests. Uh, for instance, when Benjamin Franklin is here, he stays in this room. So, uh, so after the Schuylers pass away, when Philip's death in 1804, this house is going to pass through a number of different hands over the course of the 19th century. Uh, eventually, it's going to become an orphanage uh, from 1886 until 1914. Uh, at that point, we're actually sold to New York State. We, uh, we begin the process of restoration. By 1917, uh, October of 1917, we opened as a museum for the first time. Here we are 100 years later, still going strong and uh, hoping for another 100 years. So thanks so much for visiting today. We're going to head out back, uh, and if anyone has uh, questions afterwards, I'd like to have to answer that. Thank you.